guys, Mr. Backberg here. In this video, we're going to look at more properties of three-dimensional solids. The first thing we're going to look at is the idea of a polyhedron either being convex or concave. So a polyhedron is convex if any two points on the outer surface of the polyhedron can be connected with a line segment that is either fully inside of the polyhedron or on the outer surfaces of the polyhedron itself. So just like a two-dimensional object can be convex or concave, a three-dimensional solid could also be convex or concave. Another way to think about it is if all of the vertices of the polyhedron point towards the outside of the shape, then it's convex, whereas if we've got a vertex pointing in towards the middle of our polyhedron, then we would consider it to be concave. So if we take a look at this cube, all of the vertices are pointing out away from the middle of the shape, so that is a convex polyhedron. But if we look at this stair-step shape, there are some vertices that point in towards the middle of our figure, so that is a concave polyhedron. The next thing we're going to talk about are things called platonic solids, and platonic solids are convex three-dimensional solids, and all of the faces of a platonic solid are congruent regular polygons. There are five different kinds of platonic solids. The first one is called a regular tetrahedron. So what a regular tetrahedron is, is it's a three-dimensional solid that has four faces, and all four of those faces are congruent regular triangles. The next platonic solid is a regular hexahedron, but the more common name for it is a cube. There are six congruent square faces on a regular hexahedron. Our third platonic solid is a regular octahedron, kind of like the name implies. There's going to be eight faces to this one, and the faces are all congruent regular triangles. Our fourth platonic solid is a regular dodecahedron. A dodecahedron has 12 faces, and all of the faces are congruent regular pentagons. And then our last platonic solid is a regular icosahedron. An icosahedron has 20 faces, and they're all congruent regular triangles. The last thing we're going to talk about in this video are things called cross-sections. So imagine a two-dimensional plane cutting through a three-dimensional solid. Then the place where the plane and the solid intersect is called a cross-section. And depending on what our original solid looks like, and how the plane is intersecting the solid, that can affect what different shapes are made by these cross-sections. If we take a look at this first example, we've got a cube, and the plane is parallel to the top and bottom of our cube. So as we're looking at this cross-section, trying to decide what shape it is, the shape that's created is going to be the exact same shape as the top and the bottom, since the plane is parallel to those things. So that shape is going to be a square. For our second example, we've still got that cube, but now our plane is intersecting it at a diagonal, going through some of the vertices of our cube. This cross-section is going to be a rectangle. For our third example, still looking at the cube and our plane, the plane isn't parallel to any bases, and it's kind of slanted. The top is further back than the front. So if we look at the shape that's created, we've got a pair of parallel lines across the top and across the bottom, and our other two sides are not parallel, so that makes this cross-section a trapezoid. That's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching.